Hello and welcome to another tech tip by VMNerd. Today's tech tip will be focusing on configuring a PFSense firewall to use private internet access VPN for all the computers on your network. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to just put together a quick visual as far as what we're uh, looking at here. Okay, what our configuration currently is. So that way as we walk through it, a lot of this stuff will make sense. Okay, so first thing we're going to need for a shape is we're going to need a firewall. Okay, because we've got some of those. Oh yeah, we don't have to make it too pretty. Just enough to get the point across. So um, for our particular environment here, we actually have two of them. So we have our internet itself. It's going to do internet or cloud, I guess. Yeah, so we'll just use this here. It represents the internet. Okay. So let's see. All right. So this guy here actually connects here. And then this guy here, which is our PFSense box, connects here. And then from there, we have a computer. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure the computer's in there. Yeah, again, nothing fancy here, so a little laptop. Okay, and he'll also connect to the firewall. Okay, so you're going to hear a lot of numbers fly, floating around. Which, you know, if you do this for a living or if you're pretty techno savvy, a lot of this stuff will make sense. So our computer, it has an IP address of 192.168.2.50. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that in here. Our firewall, our PFSense firewall, is at least the inside IP. It's going to be... Dot one. Okay, and then our external IP for this one is going to be 188.254.253, excuse me. Okay, and then this guy here is going to connect to another firewall. In this case, it's going to be Two five four. So, I'm not going to get into too much detail as to what he's configured for. And our external IP is, which I'm not really sure. So let's go figure out what it is. That is my IP. And here we go. Our external IP. So let's go ahead and clone this. Let's see how I type it out, which I really don't. And then what we'll do is we'll actually copy this. Okay? Copy and paste is actually your friend most of the time. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there. Here we go. So just do this like normal. And this is basically our external IP. Okay. So when we actually go to the internet, when we did a what is my IP, we hit our local gateway, which is then translated to this 253, who's passed to 254. And then from there, we actually hit the internet. So now that we have a visual for that, we can go ahead and um, go ahead and start some configurations. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to uh, private internet access website. Okay. And basically, we can just go ahead and. Type in open VPN, open VPN zip, and we just need to download the zip contents here. Now, I already did download it, but you know, you can override it, I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we went ahead and downloaded the file. We can clear our lists, I don't like stuff in there, and uh, let's go ahead and extract the contents. Uh, one of the things we'll have to pay attention to here is the uh, certificate, and I guess you can really pick any of these servers if you want. So let's start making some notes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, 
take that information. The next thing we'll need is a server. So for the purpose of what we're doing, we'll actually use, um, let's use New York City, just because it sounds cool. Okay, so here we go. We just need this guy here. And uh, let's go ahead and let's get into our PFSense box. So remember from our drawing, it is 2.1. Actually, let's highlight that for you. It's this guy here, 2.1. So our machine is 2.50. We're going to hit 2.1. And uh, if you're familiar, un hopefully you understand what, how to get you know using PFSense. That you just go to your HTTPS site here. And go ahead and log in. Uh, for the demonstration here, we're actually using PFSense 2.3. Dot whatever. There's actually 2.3.1, and it looks like there's actually a sub-release beyond that. So, okay. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to actually import that certificate. So, we're going to go ahead and create. At least based on our notes here, we just need this info here. Okay, so we do copy. We can click add, and we need to give it some something that we would know what it is. So PIA for private internet access, and put dash CA so we know it's the certificate authority certificate. Okay, so we're going to import it. Go ahead and click save, and assuming it was successful, you will see all this wonderful stuff. It means it successfully read the cert. It gives you some dates and all that information. Okay. Okay, so to make sure we can pass the DNS leak tests, one of the things we need to do is we actually need to go in here and update our DNS servers. So to do that, we click on System, the General Setup, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and update with the uh, DNS servers provided by Private Internet Access. Okay, so let's go ahead and put those in. So 209.222.1.0. One eight dot two one eight, and the other one is going to be two oh nine dot two 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 dot one eight dot two two two. Okay, and then go ahead and select override DNS, make sure that that's unchecked. Okay, okay, let's go ahead and scroll down, click save. And in theory, we should be able to resolve or basically get through the uh, DNS leak test. So the next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and configure OpenVPN. Okay. So we're going to click on the OpenVPN option, click on Clients, click the Add button, and so we need to do a peer-to-peer Da, da, da. Nothing really needs to change with the exception of this here. We need this uh, URL, which you can pretty much get from any one of those uh, text files. So go ahead and select that. Um, one thing that's kind of important is this infinitely resolve server. Go ahead and select that. Okay. And we will need the username. So for this, we actually I already have an account, so go ahead and use that. So we use and uh, you know you guys will probably have to get an account if you don't already have one, and if you do, that's fantastic. And I have some long silly password string. Okay. We need to go ahead and uncheck the uh, enable that one. Uncheck that. Go ahead and use the CA that you just created. Um, for a client certificate, you really don't need one because you're actually going to use your username and password up above. Um, this encryption algorithm is very important. We need to actually switch it to a uh, encryption algorithm that the uh, VPN service supports. Okay, And then we'll go ahead and continue to scroll down. Uh, the compression type, we need to go ahead and select adaptive. That just basically enables it for the uh, 
the communication to be encrypted as it's doing it so that way it doesn't chew up as much bandwidth and the other thing here is that we're going to go ahead and disable IPv6 uh, some people don't do it it's really I think it's really optional I don't think it really matters but I personally don't use it on my network and I don't pass the information out so it doesn't really matter okay so let's go ahead and click save and that will allow us to save it okay so um, technically if you want to check you go here to open VPN and you should actually see your tunnel lit up although your tunnels not doing anything it is lit up so so as you can tell I've already logged in I've authenticated and done all those things and it's already pulling information from their service okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually go assign a, an interface to this VPN connection so when we clear when we actually created the client it created this uh, this new like network port that it can connect into or interface so we're gonna go ahead and leverage that we're gonna create a new interface called opt1 so we'll go ahead and click save and uh, when we click here in the drop downs we'll actually see opt1 and because of the fact that you know I like to know I give my uh, interface a label I actually understand so we'll just call it VPN um, and then go ahead and enable your interface you really don't have to select anything else it doesn't really matter so go ahead and click the save option click apply And give it just a few minutes because that's just how it is now so you remember before when we actually did the uh, you know what is my IP and we came back with the IP the 64 145 76 117 um, when we're done we'll actually get a different one so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually go into the firewall section and click on the NAT tab okay and what we want to see inside of here under the outbound section we actually need to specify a manual outbound NAT rule so go ahead and click save and it's going to generate some predefined default ones so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the existing ones because we really don't want any of our you know 192 168 2 addresses to go anywhere else at this point so we're going to go ahead and just adjust those ones so right now it's destined to go out the WAN interface but now we're actually because we created a new one we actually called one called VPN and what we're going to do is we're just going to move it down to there okay click save and do the rinse and repeat for the other one same exact thing okay go ahead and click apply all right and one last thing we need to do is we need to actually go to our local firewall rule specify our LAN and go ahead and update the gateway that this thing is actually going to go out so when the rule is actually processed it knows which gateway to use so by default it's going to use the default gateway and, and in that case it's actually the 188.254 but since we created the new VPN interface and we created that new uh, VPN gateway type thing what we need to do is go ahead and specify that click Save and then there's one last important step that we need to do now that we did all these configurations we need to go in and click the uh, open VPN status page and we actually need to restart the service the reason why is because we made a lot of changes and we want to make sure that those changes actually take effect so let's go ahead and restart and we'll know it's restarted here in just a moment okay so it's been restarted okay so let's go ahead and do a what is my IP okay and if you look right here we actually have a brand new IP address okay so the last and final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do one of those uh, DNS leak tests so what we'll do is we'll go to uh, DNS leak com and from here we'll go ahead and click the start button and it looks like our DNS is not leaking and that's our tech tip on configuring a PFSense firewall to use private internet access VPN for all the computers on your network I hope you enjoyed our tutorial and have a great day.